Hey everyone, today we are talking about five tips for shared devices. Thanks for coming to learn a little bit more about using Seesaw in your classroom. I am Angela and I taught kindergarten for 15 years. In my classroom, we had five iPads with about 24 students. So I know all about making Seesaw work no matter what your device setup is. And I now lead the community team here at Seesaw. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, stop by, say hello, let me know how you're doing in your classroom with your shared device setup. Uh, this session is really intended to support you as you use shared devices in your classroom. Some of the things that we are going to be talking about might you might feel like, hey, I already have this going on in my room and feel good about yourself, which is awesome. And some things might be new to consider. So I hope that you uh, see that as well. Um, just checking in and here we go. The first tip that I'm going to share is pretty simple, but also very important as you are building the routine for using devices in your classroom, and that is create a home base for those devices. That is a spot where your devices will always be accessible. They're easy for your students to grab and use when they need them. Hopefully they are charged and ready to be used. Um, you will see here that in my classroom, uh, I had them where there was an outlet, and this so happened to be in the front of my room where we also gathered for morning meeting and whatnot. Uh, keep that in mind, you know, you want it in an accessible spot, right? Um, and make sure everyone knows where to find them. And this really comes in handy when you have shared devices because you don't want to waste any time looking around the room for, you know, the Chromebook that's on this table or, oh, this one's over here. So keep that in mind. Really simple, but again, pretty powerful when you have shared devices. Um, the second tip that I will share is make sure when your students get their hands on those shared devices, you have made it as easy as possible to find Seesaw as quickly as possible. So if you are using iPads, a simple thing that you can do is actually add Seesaw to your tray, I believe what it is what it's called on an iPad. We'll talk about Chromebooks here in a minute. But in order to do this on an iPad, you just actually press and hold the app icon and then drag it to that tray. And what that allows your students to do is always see Seesaw. So no matter, you know, if they're scrolling and you have, you know, various pages of, of apps, if you've got a lot of apps going on on your device, it's nice to have this in the tray because they are all, it's always visual, it's always right there. So in my classroom, I always had basically our most frequently used apps uh, were in the tray. And as you can see here, this is a pretty good representation of what my students were using um, on a consistent basis. And again, it's about saving time because if you have shared devices, you wanna make sure uh, that they're quickly accessing Seesaw when they get on them. If you're using Chromebooks, I actually have in this slide here, when you get the slides, um, slides that will actually walk you through how to pin Seesaw to your shelf on a Chromebook. That means, again, similar to an iPad, it just shows up right there. And one of the tips that I give when you follow this link down here, this show me how, is that your IT department can actually push Seesaw out to all of your Chromebooks. So that could be an option that they can do for you so your students don't even have to try to add it there. So keep that in mind as a tip. Uh, tip number three, we love recording spots, right? And I think really, really helpful in terms of building this routine because when you have shared devices, you wanna make sure you have a routine in place for accessing them, using them, putting them back. Uh, part of the routine that I used in my classroom were creating recording spots. So these were really simple. Um, 
quite honestly, I use this poster. So I created this poster um, and hung it up in one in each corner of my classroom and then one additional spot because I had five devices. So five devices meant five recording spots that were spread out. And basically, again, I did this to better allow my students to reflect. They're not distracted by others. It helps reduce the background noise. You're never going to have a silent, perfect recording. So I think just, you know, push that out of your mind. Hopefully your classroom is busy and lots of conversation is happening. Um, I also recommend if you're going to do this, it's handy to have it in a location where that can actually set the device down, um, especially if you're working with littles and they tend to, you know, they're moving and grooving all the time, including when they're holding that device with their, their little fingers um, can, you know, rustle over the mic and whatnot. So that's just another tip. And again, in when you get these slides, you will have the link to this poster. It's also available via our help center. All right, moving right along, tip number four, and this is a big one. Think about creating hands-on first and then reflecting, explaining with Seesaw as a layer to that, okay? So what that means is, you know, I would often joke that, you know, I was always one-to-one -one in my classroom with markers, crayons, and pencils, right? Lots of paper and all that. Um, so I really took advantage of the fact that they can do a lot of their learning hands-on without a device and they could then bring in that layer of seesaw to capture and reflect okay so i think sometimes teachers kind of get caught up on that and they think oh my gosh i've got to i've got to share this activity with them and they're you know they're only going to respond on seesaw there's lots of activities that you can use on Seesaw that actually allow them to bring in their creations that they've already started at started on in your classroom. So on the left here, you'll notice, for example, in Writer's Workshop, okay, my students still created with the common classroom materials, and they would add a layer of Seesaw to that by taking a photo and recording their voice. In the center here, you see literacy stations. So they're using the same hands-on materials. They're adding Seesaw to, you know, add some drawing to it and explain and reflect. On the right, you see an example of actually a math kind of scavenger hunt that we did where they were working in the classroom identifying various um, pattern blocks and shapes. So think about how you can use that flow to support more students being able to create with a layer of Seesaw. And the fifth thing that I would recommend, tip number five, is really thinking about a way that you can use Seesaw at a station. So sometimes when you are trying to figure out, okay, I only have you know, five devices or one device and I've got 24 students, how is this going to work? A station is a great solution. So this could be as simple as, hey, we put it at the writing station. And when you're done with your writing, you take a picture and record it. This could be a spelling station where they're listening to you, maybe in a video, giving the spelling test and they're writing it down. Um, just things like that. Think about how you, again, already have your classroom set up, those routines that are already in place, how can you incorporate Seesaw into that to make it really work, really work for you and your students? Um, the other thing that I would point you to is inside Seesaw, if you go to, as a teacher, the green add button, and then assign activity, that will bring you into the activities that you have created, but also you have the opportunity to go into Seesaw's activity library, the community library. And one of my favorite collections is called the Getting Started Collection. And it exists for every single grade level. So when you click on that collection, you are going to see activities that really work no matter what your device setup is. And they are often 
again, back to my other tip, they're often started with creation outside of Seesaw, okay? So when I talk about that, again, part of that is a lot of times, like when I think about my classroom, when they were using Seesaw and reflecting, it was pretty quick. You know, it, the majority of instances, my students could, you know, by the time they grabbed the iPad, took their photo, went to the recording spot, you know, expect, uh, reflected and explained, they were done within a minute. And that device was ready for another student because they brought it back to the home base. They know it's there, it's ready to go, okay? so. So I think that's something to consider as well. We also have these awesome task cards that are available that you can have at a station where students can follow these visual directions and independently be creating their posts in Seesaw. So if you want to get your hands on these, you can follow the link here um, on this bit.ly shared on the slide, but they're also available in our help center if you just search getting started guides. So what does this really look like? Okay, so thanks for sharing those five tips, Angela, but let's just like see this in real life. So this is actually a screenshot from my kindergarten class. Uh, again, I've been out of the classroom for a few years now, but this is legitimately my, my uh, screenshot of my class. So this is September. So the first day of school was September 1st, and you'll see I have 24 items added that very first day. And that was added by me, the teacher. And that was me posting a photo of each student to their own portfolio because I wanted to initiate that conversation and communication between home and school. You'll notice some other items that I have posted here. Again, this is just me posting. You notice though, on the second day of school, am I, am I like, oh my gosh, I've got to get something in for every student? Absolutely not, right? I'm not putting that pressure on myself. Um, I'm, I'm embedding it where I see it naturally occurring in my classroom. But you'll notice on, here we are, day seven of kindergarten, this is my student's first entry. Okay, so I have 19 items there. Again, not every student did that that day. It was okay, that's fine. Don't beat yourself up over that. Um, as we get into September, so this is September 21st. Again, this is 2015, so this is four years ago in my classroom. Um, this is an example of students collaborating in a small group. So when you have shared devices, think about those opportunities as well for collaboration. So in this example, in some, you know, some of the things that you're seeing here, they were sorting buttons as part of our math lesson. So they worked in a group of three or four, took a photo, drew, recorded, explained. It was added to those portfolios into Seesaw. The next thing I wanna show here is a math, and I call it an everyone post, okay? So again, this is late September. And this is, these are students posting on their own independently. This was um, a check-in on creating patterns. So I wanted to see what kind of pattern they were creating, how they were doing with that. So they grabbed Seesaw to share that with me. And if you think about this, how long does it take a student to take a photo? It's very fast. They're taking their photo, they're adding it to Seesaw, device goes back to the home base, they go back to creating and building, continuing their work, right? Maybe they're creating their next pattern. Meanwhile, student B just finished. So now they go grab that device and they go. So that flow, just think about, you know in your classroom, not every single student finishes their work at the same time. So this is a natural, a natural occurrence, right? In your classroom, which makes thinking about how to get students posting in Seesaw, it fits in because students are finishing their first example at various times. 
Um, another common way that I would do what I called, again, an everyone post, I wanted to make sure to get a sample from everyone. And you'll see this is near the end of October in my classroom. One of the things that I did every single month was that students look through their writer's workshop folder and they chose their favorite piece from the month and share that into Seesaw. Okay, so we made sure to do that at the end of every single month. And this would be an example of, you know, everyone. And again, when you're trying to balance like, oh my gosh, I don't, I have a limited number of devices. I've got a lot of students. How does this work? Again, students will be finishing at various times. They can grab the device. It's really pretty quick and easy that they are documenting and reflecting with Seesaw. So then it's also ready for the next person. So in a typical, when I think about this lesson, for example, and I'm thinking, you know, this was probably, uh, probably 20 to 30 minutes, potentially, uh, probably 20 if we're talking uh, October kindergarten, uh, where students were looking through their folder, they were deciding what, you know, what piece they were going to fancy up, what piece they were going to use as their, you know, their favorite piece of writing from that month. Um, and again, the timing of that works because not everyone is, is done at the same time, but yet they can go and continue their work um, as well. So I threw out a lot of ideas to you there. Uh, we are going to stick around and answer some questions, but I'm also going to give a code to those of you that are watching the recording, and that code is 837268. You will need that in order to get the certificate for viewing the recording. You'll find that in the description on YouTube or in the email with this follow-up. So I'm gonna go into some live questions here today.